why do we even need to learn about our vectors in two dimensions so for you to be able to solve problems that have to do with newton's law work energy and power electrostatics and so on you need a general understanding of vectors in two dimensions so that's why we have to do this topic right so this problem that i have here is from uh, november 2018 uh the grade 11 final exam so let's see what is happening here so we are told that two forces of magnitude 15 newtons and 18 newtons act at a point on a cartesian plane in the direction shown in the sketch below right and then there we have our sketch and the first question, uh, 2.1, is saying, let's give the correct term for the following description. A single vector having the same effect as two or more vectors together. A single vector having the same effect as two or more vectors together. That's a definition, right? It's a definition for a resultant vector, right? So a resultant vector it's a vector uh, that has the same effect as two or more vectors together. The name itself sort of gives it away, right? A resultant vector. Now let's move to 2.2 and then do some work. So 2.2.1 says, let's find the magnitude of the vertical component of the 50 Newton's force, right? Uh, so let's uh go ahead and uh, pay attention uh to that force so we have this 15 newton uh force here as uh you can see right and then uh our question is asking us to find the vertical component so we're gonna go ahead and do that but then after we find the vertical component we're gonna go ahead and even find uh, the horizontal component right just for the sake of clarity so that you can see how you're supposed to solve these kind of questions so we have a force of 15 newtons acting at an angle of 30 uh, degrees right uh, relative uh, to the horizontal so how would you find uh, a vertical component so if you want to find uh, the vertical component so let's call it f y right you want to find uh, the y component of a force acting at an angle you see that uh, that original force multiply by sine of the angle between the force and the surface and then if you want to find uh, the horizontal component uh, you're gonna see uh, that force right multiply by cos uh, of uh, the angle between uh, the force and uh, the horizontal surface so here uh, the question is saying let's find the magnitude of the vertical uh, component so we're gonna see fy uh, is equals to the force which is uh, 15 newtons right uh, multiply by uh, sine of the angle so that is sine of uh, 30 uh, degrees right so let me just uh, put that in my calculator real quick and see what I get so uh, I'm getting uh, 25 uh, newtons right so that is essentially how you would solve this problem but then let's just go ahead and find um, the horizontal component right for the sake of clarity so if you want to find fx we're gonna say uh, f which is 50 multiplied by uh, cos of the angle right so cos of um, 30 degrees so if we do that uh, we're going to get uh, 43.3 .3, so fx will be 43.3 uh, newtons right so all you have to do for this kind of questions you have to know if uh, we're talking about the horizontal component uh, you use cos and if we're talking about um, the vertical component then you use sign just like uh, we did here right so that's sort of you know how we solve these kind of problems and then uh 2.2.2 is saying that uh let's calculate the magnitude of the resultant net force right so the magnitude of the resultant net force so when we want to find the magnitude of the resultant net force we see that uh f r right being uh the resultant squared will be equals to uh the forces uh acting on the horizontal squared 
plus uh, the forces acting on the uh, vertical squared, right? So what you do here, you add all the forces acting on the horizontal and then you square them plus all the forces acting on the vertical and you square them, right? So let's go and look at our diagram here. We can see that uh, there's this 15 Newton uh, force that is acting at an angle, right? And then here we have uh, the 80 Newton force as you can see, right? But then along the X, right? Along the horizontal, the 15 Newton force is pulling away from the 80 Newton force, right? So we're supposed to find the difference between uh, that two, right? So we already know that uh, for the 50 uh, Newton force, we already know that Fx will be equals to, uh, we have it somewhere here, that is uh, 43.3 Newtons, right? Uh, I already calculated it. When I was trying to demonstrate how we uh, would solve a problem if it had, say, the horizontal component. So now we have that Fx, which is 43.3 Newtons, and then we have the 80 Newton pointing in the opposite direction, right? So let me make it uh, a bit more clear. So let's say uh, we put a dot there and then we have a force going that side and then we have another uh, one going uh, that side. So in the horizontal, we have a 80 Newton force uh, pulling to the right and then a 43.3 uh, Newton uh, pulling to the left, right? So the resultant here between the two is going to be 80 minus 43.3, uh, which is going to be close to uh, 36.7 Newtons, right? So the resultant horizontal force acting at that point is 36.7 Newtons to the right, right? Let's just uh, get that clear. And then now we can come to the horizontal component. So if you look at this sketch, uh, you will realize that the 80 Newton force, uh, it has a vertical component of zero, right? Because that angle there is zero. Uh, the only force that we are interested in in the vertical is the 15 Newton force, right? And we already know that uh, we have a component of 25 Newton from 2.21, right? So the resultant uh, on the y-axis is uh, 25 uh, newtons, right? So what are we saying now? We're saying that um, we're ending up with something uh, like this, right? Uh, let me just uh, draw that real quick. We have a force of um, 40... We have a force of 36.7 newtons. Uh, on the X and then on the Y, we have a force of uh, 25 Newtons, right? So we can go ahead and use this formula here to find uh, the resultant. So we're going to have uh, the resultant squared being equals to 36.7 squared plus uh, 25 squared, right? So from here on, there isn't much to do. You just take uh, square roots uh, on both sides, right? So if you see 36.7 squared plus 25 squared and you take the square root, so you should get 44.41 Newtons. So the resultant here, the resultant here is uh, 44 point four one newtons right so we have the resultant and uh, that's exactly what we're supposed to find and then 2.2.3 says uh, let's determine the direction of the resultant net force right so there's two ways you can use to find uh, the direction right it's either you find the angle between the x component and uh, the resultant force, or you find the angle between the vertical uh, component and the uh, resultant force. But we are going to find uh, this angle here, which we're just going to call uh, theta, right? Uh, why are we? Why am I choosing that angle instead? Because in analytical geometry, it's an angle of inclination. So let's just stay consistent across all the subjects, right? So if we want to find uh, that angle there, so we have uh, this hypotenuse here, uh, that is uh, the resultant force, right? And then we have this adjacent side, 
there so which trick are we are gonna use here we're gonna use cos right because we know that cos of uh, theta is equals to uh, the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse so now we can say that uh, cos of theta is equals to the adjacent which is uh, 36.7 and uh, the hypotenuse which is uh, 44.41 right uh, so theta is going to be cos uh, inverse of um, 36.7 divided by 44.41 meaning that uh, we have an angle of 34.27 degrees